Holtzvega is it's this path um, that meanders through the woods. It's, it's a German word, okay? So um, in German, Holtzvega means wood path. And these wood paths meander through the woods and they end abruptly. And originally, they were a lot of them were paths that were used for um, clearing wood uh, for the lumber industry. And I, I first came to the, the word Holtzvega um, through Martin Heidegger, who actually used the word Holtzvega as the title of a book of essays he did. And the reason that he used the word Holtzvega was um, for him, it was a, a conduit to inquiry, philosophical inquiry and uh, discovery. And I really like that idea that, you know, you're on this path and it just ends. But rather than that being a bad thing, it forces you to say, OK, well, what can I discover here? Where can I go from here? And it opens up all these new possibilities. And I want to use it that way. So so that's where this this came from in the first place. Mm hmm. You, you worked with layers before. Have, have you had a path also within your work before, or is this just something entirely new that you've just got uh, into? It's no. This is this is new. Um, I, I had in a, a previous work, um, kind of two series ago, a work that I did called uh, "Reclaiming the Night." Uh, they were urban and suburban landscapes, and some of them had streets and paths, but it wasn't about the path. Um, it was much more about just what. The, the night landscape uh, feels like uh, for, from a female perspective. So no, this is this is very different. Um, and the funny thing is, landscapes seem to come in and out of my work all the time. And I never really thought of myself as a landscape photographer. Mm -hmm. When I think of landscape photography, I think of Ansel Adams and those those kinds of images. And I don't see my work being anything like that. But um, yet, the the landscape is very uh, very prevalent in my work. And, and I realize now that it's, it's actually very important that I have a real connection to the landscape. And, and a lot of this work has been uh, about exploring that as well, my own connection to the landscape and to specific landscapes within this larger context of, of the Holtz Vegas series. Right. Sure. In terms of the process itself, are you, do you have a goal when you go out to, and achieve that goal in terms of, oh, I'm going to look for the mountains or this particular path, or you just sort of stumble upon them as you... As you uh live your life? Um, both. Uh, sometimes I go out looking for specific kinds of landscapes. Um, sometimes when I'm working, I'll, I'll feel like, oh, I don't have enough winter images to work with. And so I'll make a conscious effort to go out and shoot during the winter, or, you know, to have snow in the, in the images. Or uh, at one point I felt like I needed uh, a landscape that was more kind of rolling hills and a very different landscape than what I had access to here. Mm -hmm. So sometimes I will, um, there was there was a point at which I realized that I wanted some landscapes that were very uh, distinctly Midwest, because now that I live in the Midwest, uh, which has always been kind of a foreign landscape to me. But now that I've, I've lived here for since 1994, uh, it's really, it's a more familiar landscape. And I wanted to go out and make images that were very specific to the Midwest. So incorporating cornfields and um, much more rural scenes that have farming, uh, you know, barns and things like that. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so sometimes I'm looking for specific things, and other times I'm just out. If I'm on a road trip, I have my camera with me. If I see something uh, that I respond to, just as an artist, I'll I'll shoot it. Or if I see something that I think relates to the the body of work, I'll shoot it. Uh, a lot of times, if it's just the lighting is is really good, I'll go out and shoot. Or when I'm driving, if there's particularly nice lighting, I'll shoot while I'm driving, or preferably when somebody else is driving, but I, sh I shoot through the windshield. <laughs> <laughs> Literally while you're moving, huh? Uh, yeah. Well, usually when I'm shooting through the windshield, somebody else is driving, uh -huh. but not always. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. Um, so uh, have you started this work in the film age, or you've been strictly digital your entire career? Um. No, my, my entire career is, is definitely not digital. My entire career is, is everything. Um, this particular series is strictly digital. Mm -hmm. uh, when I set out to do this body of work, it's, I knew that it had to be digital. I knew it had to be color. Uh, I knew that I was going to be shooting color images and working with transparency. Uh, and I, I didn't know much more than that. But I, I knew that that's where I was going to start with this. So, yeah, it, it was always a digital project. Where other projects I've done, I've gone back and forth between film and, and digital technology. Mm -hmm. 
Now, describe how you got started on on uh, your photography. Well, actually, it's a funny story. Um, when I was 16 and living in New York City, my uh, my very dear uncle uh, said, "I, I want to get you something special for your birthday." And, and I said, "And I was really into astronomy at the time." And I said, "I'd really love a telescope." And mm -hmm. so he said, "Great, I would love to buy you a telescope." And he did. And then my mother. <laughs> said, what are you going to do with a telescope? We live in a small apartment in New York and no place to put it. And this is so impractical. And right. why don't you let him get you something else? And so I said, okay, well, and I thought about it. And he was really into photography and my dad was really into photography. And they were more hobbyists, more photo enthusiasts. And I thought, well, a camera would be a practical gift. And so he bought me a camera and um, my dad taught me how to use it. And, and that was it. I, after that, I was just completely hooked and I started taking, you know, I did a black and white photography class in high school and that was it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> there was no turning back. Oh, that's great. So what did you study? Do you, you went to college also studying uh, photography? Yep. yep. I studied, I did a bachelor of fine arts at Clark university and I, I, focused on photography, but I, I did other art courses as well. But I, I basically did my degree in photography. Uh, I worked with Stephen Dorado, who's just a wonderful, wonderful mentor. And then after uh, college, I came back to New York and worked in the city for a couple of years uh, in commercial photography, did some photojournalism, some freelance work, did some traveling and shooting on my own and uh, applied to graduate school. And then I went back to school and did my MFA at Syracuse University mm -hmm. and that was in uh, a program that they called uh, Art Media Studies. So it was uh, an MFA program for photography, video, film and computer computer art but at that point computer art was still pretty <laughs> undeveloped. Mm -hmm. uh, so but essentially I, I did mainly photography and video um, but mainly photography in, in graduate school and I started teaching photography when I was in graduate school uh, and at that point I was already a hundred committed to being a, an artist working pr predominantly with photography. Right. Now were there um, contemporary or historical artists that uh, inspired you in your work? Um, no, you know, it's funny, I've, I'm, I've always been inspired by artists, but I've never really made work like those artists. Um, I've always been inspired by experience, by personal experience, and I've always made work about my own experience. And what I try to do is take something that's personal and very um, meaningful to me, but put it out as something that's more universal that people can relate to so that it's not about my very specific personal experience. It's about a more universal experience. And I, I did that with Reclaiming the Night, uh, where I took my personal experience, but it was more about many people's experiences. Um, a loss of control was the same thing. It came out of work that was based on very personal uh, experiences with childbirth, with having a back injury, but it, the work ultimately became about these greater issues of control rather than my personal issues. And then with this work, same thing. Um, they are very much about my personal experience of the landscape, but what the viewer hopefully gets from these is, is a much more universal experience that we all have. We all have that experience where you think you're going along, you know what you're doing, uh, you have plans, and then life just changes, right. and, and we adapt, and um, sometimes we end up in a much better place. Um, we, and, you know, we don't know, but that, that unknown uh, and that sort of life just happens is, is a universal experience. Mm -hmm. Where would you like to see your work evolve from here? Oh, that's a good question. Um, well, I am still working on, on this project and I actually just started shooting uh, landscapes that have kind of new, um, new elements, new man-made elements, like uh, these wind turbines uh, are really starting to pop up a lot in the landscape. And so I've, I've been trying to find landscapes while I'm out driving that um, incorporate wind turbines. And I want to start to, to incorporate those into the work, which I think is going to give it a very different look um, and start to speak to the way the landscape is changing. Or, mm -hmm. you know, our, our landscape is physically really changing as those things pop up. Um, but I also have another body of work that's brewing that has to do with um, memory and uh, that work has, I haven't quite started that yet, I'm going to start working on that one over the summer, but it's a real different project and it's not landscape based, or at least I don't think it will be. Mm -hmm. 
but you never know. <laughs> yeah, you're guided by your work. <laughs> it just it well, sort of sometimes... takes you along. Yeah, sometimes the work takes on a life of its own. You start somewhere, and then you just have to go with it. Uh, I certainly didn't know exactly what these pieces were going to look like a lot. And a lot of the pieces, when I start an individual piece, I take photographs, uh, individual photographs, and I, I play with them, I put them together, and I might have some ideas that this particular image is going to look good combined with this particular image. But until I actually put them together in Photoshop, I don't really know. Mm -hmm. And I play with them. And sometimes things happen that I don't anticipate. And that's always really exciting. Sometimes they're happy surprises. Mm -hmm. yeah, definitely. And this is uh, definitely a unique piece of work. And we're going to be excited to be exhibiting it. Um, one final question. What words of wisdom would you uh, instill upon uh, any young, inspiring uh, photographers? Uh, I think it's very important to work from what you know and, and work from something that's true to you uh, and do work that's meaningful, personally meaningful to you. Um, you have to be willing to work very hard. <laughs> uh, I, I have too many students that initially go into art because they think it's going to be easy. And uh, it's it's very it takes a lot of work. It's it's a, you have to really be committed. Um, but I, I think anybody that's interested in photography, uh, you just have to do it. You just have to want to do it, and then just do it and stick with it, and um, and be be true to your voice. We're going to look forward to seeing your exhibit. Uh, again, it's going to be at the Query Art Gallery from January eighth through the twenty eighth, and uh, we look forward to seeing it. I'm looking forward to it.